Hi, my name is Dean. Uh, I would like to give you a demo of Oracle's OBM 3.0, a complete server virtualization platform for your data center. It has all the neat features like live migration, HR. Uh, it's full, completely and fully supported by Oracle, for Oracle databases, and give, get the best performance out of it. Um, and it's free, so you only pay support for it, so you can use it in production, you can use it all over, and it's, it's a super product, and I would like to give you a demo of it, okay? So let's log into the platform, that's admin, and then you enter your password. I've set up a little demo environment of uh, two servers at this point, a OBM manager, this is the OBM manager you come into, and a server for my uh, VMs so it's completely f uh, fresh here so I don't have anything so I would like to configure the systems so I'm just going to show you briefly how you do that so we don't have any servers we don't have anything so I just pretty want to go out and just see if I discover some servers here so now I know the IP address for uh, the system um, but if I had more servers, I could have given it an IP range. I only have one uh, server in the environment. Uh, when you configure the OVM server, you will ask for a password for the agent that is put on the system. So I'm just going to put that one in here. Uh, and then OK. So now it's going to go out and discover the server to see if it can f find it. And you see down here it's in progress and it's completed. So let's go and see what it found. Yep, I have a server running here and with uh, the agent and you can see how much memory and things like that. I don't have that much in the systems but it's okay. For this demo it's completely okay. You also see if it's uh, bonded supports. So it's actually bonded to uh, Pull here, uh, it's up and running. You will also see the net adapters. Here you have it. So I might want to configure it differently. I don't know. Let's see here. No, so that's okay. See physical disk. I don't have anything here. You can see what events. If server's up and running. The object's created. So that's fine. So. I don't have any resources, so I'm just going to go and create a server pool. One thing I actually want to do first is I want to put in my storage. Uh, you also need some storage, of course, uh, to have your VMs, and when you do live migrations, uh, you need to have some shared storage so the machines can be shifted around between uh, the different machines you have in a pool. A pool is a an amount of systems that you have in, in, in that you can fail over between or you can look, do live migration between so but in my case I only have one server in my pool and another very very smart thing is that when you're adding a system to the, your configuration here it's automatically put into the uh, to uh, to a cluster so if you have two servers and you create one pool it will automatically set up live migration or HR between those two systems. So let me just create a pool. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm just gonna go. Sorry here. I'm just gonna, no. Sorry. Let me just create the storage here. Uh, as you see, you can have file storage. You can have a storage area network. I just go five channel storage. So let's just go over here. Create some new storage. That's going to be my OVM server. I'll try to spell. Yeah. OVM server VM. So that's pretty good name. So six one zero. So yep. I think you see my server here. I'm just going to add that one. It's going to finish off. So it's going to Completing and you will go in this here. So you have the OVM server. One thing that's uh, it's required to have, you need to have a place to put.
put your ISO images and you need a place to have your servers, your VMs. So you need actually two places. You could have this on, you know, on, on one system and you can have this in another system, depending on how you want to do it. So I think this is very important when doing this if, uh, when you've added is that you go up and make a refresh of file systems. So I'm refresh that one. Uh, or else it will later come out and ask you uh, when you're creating a VM and we're going to say that your file system has not been refreshed. So you just need to do that when you put them into the system. So now I have a server. Okay, so now we're going to create a server pool. So we'll go up here. Uh, and I'm just going to call that test pool. And I'm just going to get an IP address. This is a virtual IP address. 50. Uh, going to put it on the file system here. I'm choosing the server. And there, create this one. So now we're creating a um, test pool. And you can see it's in progress down here. As you can see now we have a test pool but we don't have any any machines in the system yet so I'm gonna invite or add a server into the pool and we have one pool server which we're gonna use here so now in our pool we have a server which is where we're gonna have our virtual machines when we come to that part so it's warning, it's going to say the status of warning. But we might want to go in and look at what the warning is going to be at some point. So now the system is up and running here. Okay. So another thing I would like to uh, do is I want to go down under hardware. As you saw, we have up here, we have info, we have bun. Bundings, we have Ethernet ports and physical disk and events, and we're going to go on here and see what we have. Of, uh, as you can see here, we have a port 2. And actually, if I press here, I think, and you go into here, you will see that I have a network which is something going to be my management network, my clustered heartbeat, my uh, live migrate. Where I do live migration, I have my storage network, which is also one of the good things here is that I can actually create, I could actually use a, a separate network port for my storage, so thereby also guaranteeing that uh, my virtual machine is not uh, the communication to my virtual machine is not running on their on their um, on the network that are uh, for the storage. So, but. I have one network extra ports uh, in, in the systems where I'm going to run my virtual machine. So okay, now I've changed my, my uh, network IP address. Or it's not set for anything. It's just set for none at this point. So I'm actually going to go to my tools and set vNIC manager. See, I need some virtual NICs. Check here. I can create uh, the the MAC addresses for my card. So I'm just going to give it something. So what about so this is two, three, two, one, one, I don't know. And how many uh, uh, I need to create it. Uh, I say I'm going to create uh, 10. So generate. So we're actually going to go out now is to generate 10 virtual MAC addresses that I have standing here that I can use later on. So I'm just going to close that one. So I have uh, some uh, virtual NICs uh, available when I need to create my virtual machine. So you will see that later. Now, just remember I created 10 at this point. So let's go to the home. I want to go see here. I have my OVM server here. 
And I'm just going to go in and create a virtual machine. You will see where it goes into. So I'm just going to create a Oracle minus 5. It has, it's going to have 1 uh, gig of memory. It's going to be based on uh, send uh, virtualization. If you were running Windows, you would have pre virtualized virus and if it had needs to run in the operating system, it's going to be Oracle. And wow, I need a repository. So the repository is where I'm going to con uh, create my uh, or store my uh, configuration files. So I actually have to cancel here. Sorry about that, guys, but that's uh, when you do a live demo. Uh, you, you sure will go out here. And that's going to create. Go to server pools. You will see up here. You have repositories. I don't have anyone at this point, so it says it's going to create a repository. Uh, we're going to call that uh, OVM repositories. And it's asking me where I want to locate it. So I'm just going to choose it. Uh, That's where I'm going to have all my files and I'm going to pick it up later. The next thing is very important here. next thing we want to do when we create the OVM repository is that we want to present it for the whole environment. So have the OVM serve out here. Mm, sorry. No. So now we're ready to create our first virtual machine. So I've set up a server, OVM server, where I need to have my VMs running on. I have set up the Oracle VM Manager. I've set up the network. I've created the VNIX. I've created the storage where I need to have my sh machines, which I haven't shown you actually is the repository where I also create shown you that I created earlier. I what I actually did was I loaded in some ISO images onto the system on the server and did a refresh of the repository. And what actually came out of it was that now can you see I have a Oracle Enterprise 5, I have Solaris 10, I have a Windows XP Pro ISO image uh, on the systems which I could uh, could install. So I was going to go to create our first virtual machine here. So I'm going to create the virtual machine. Here you will see the test pool that the one we created. Uh, any, I only have one server, so it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, make any sense to choose anything else. But you know, you would have more than one server in a pool, so you have HR and virtual uh, live migration between them. So, Oracle Linux five. That's the machine I want to create. This my test uh, Oracle Linux five. Here I can uh, specify how much memory I want to have in the server. Seeing I don't have that much on my my uh, OVM server, I will only create uh, one uh, gig of memory on it and one processor. Also, you will see over here you have the domain type. If I needed to install the Windows XP, I would have chosen the per virtualized drivers, which requires that one. So at this point, I will Linux five. It's an OVM repository. Uh, that's where I'm going to have my configuration files. The Minix that you saw me create early in the game, or in the in my demo here, is now available, and I'm going to choose one of those to have for my virtual machine. The next thing is that I will be the repository where I will be picking things from. Uh, also, I need to specify a name for my disk to so test. Oracle Linux 5 test. Maybe I should take a count over here. And how much space I want to use for it? 10 gigs. That should be enough. Uh, and there you will see all the different ISO images. I'm just going to create this one I need to have. Go next. Uh, the order, the specify the disk order. Maybe I should move that one up there. So that's going to be my disk. And here you have the boot order. Uh, my recommendation is at this point what I found out was to have the disk 
first and the CD-ROM after. Because when you're booting for the first time, you can't boot from the disk, so go down and choose the CD-ROM. If you had uh, these are, uh, if you change the order, it will always boot on the CD-ROM first, and then take the disk. And that would mean that when you're finished installing the Linux, it would start up on the installation disk again. So finish. I've now created my or set up my first machine. So let's see here. Like I can also show you how I would create a, a Windows machine if you want to see that one. So let's see here. Go up here. Say uh, test XP. I don't have a license key, so I'll only be, be able to show you how it's set up. Uh, so I'm just going to hear uh, test Windows XP. So you get one gigs of memory. And here I would be choosing the pair virtualized drivers. You already system the Windows here. Go here. It's going to take a Nick here more for that one. Next. Uh, and so let's go Windows. Uh, if I could spell Windows XP disk. Um, and how much? Two gigs of memory. I don't know. That's shit enough. And then I'm just going to choose the Windows ISO image instead. The order of the disks. Round the first disk, then the CD ROM, and then finish. And then the finished. Okay, so we created two machines and Oracle Linux 5. We created a test XP. Let's take the Oracle Linux 5. It's going to press start. And it's going to start up the machine.